Hello. That's better than nothing. Update 85. I'm just going to go to 100 updates. Finish strong. And after 100 updates, uh, all I will do is infrequently post illustrated short stories as a means to continue honing my drawing and my writing. The original goal was 200 just to give myself some kind of goal, but I'm working on so many other things right now that I don't have time for this, as you can see with the infrequency of the updates lately. A book should never tell you that a character is sad. A book should never tell you something was funny. It goes back to showing and not telling. I guess art is kind of... It's conveying knowledge through feeling. Which is oxymoronic. Feeling is not knowledge. But we've all, we all know that we've felt angry. We all know that we've felt sad. Can you describe it? No. So how do you know? How can you know something if you can't describe it adequately? How can you know you're in love if you can't describe it adequately? You just know. Some things you just know. What about the feelings you can't trust? Feelings you're unsure about? That's not between you and other humans at that point. The feelings you can't trust, that's between you and God. All right. It's time for a story, it's time for a story. A very special story, especially for you. The Cursed Gun, Part 2. Strangers were uncommon in Braysville, Arizona, just a ways south of Flagstaff. So when Miguel walked into the bank, the teller was extra polite. Good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? He sounded as sharp as a violin. Want to put something in the safe, Miguel said. He placed the black box with the gold trim on the counter. Certainly, certainly. I'll have you fill out several forms for us. We've been trying to implement a more modern approach to our storage system. I'm not signing nothing. Just put it in there and don't take it out until I ask. Sorry, sir. I'll have to. And that box won't fit under the bars, so I don't recommend you leave it there. Can you catch? Pardon? Miguel tossed the box over the top of the bars, and the man gave a little shout as he grabbed it before it hit the ground. Now it's on your side. Put it in the safe. Miguel laid down a $10 bill. You remember my face? No, not really. I can hardly see you with your hat like that. Miguel took off his hat. Remember me. The guy who threw you a box and gave you ten bucks. He tipped his hat and left the flustered teller to do his job. Miguel walked to the stable where he was keeping his horse, plus the one he had acquired from the dying man. The stable hand, a young, clean-shaven man, said, Hiya, mister. You own the chestnut? And the palomino. Sorry to hear that. Rear left hoof is all infected, filled with yellow. Whole hoof's fallen apart like a rotten stump. Miguel let a growling sigh rumble from his throat. <sighs> Will it heal? Not one this infected, but she might ride again. You been watering her enough? Not for the past day. Been in a bit of a hurry, Miguel said. Mayor's gonna need some rest. A lot of it. I'll get Todd to break open the hoof once he gets here. When will she be able to ride? She's got to be able to walk before she can ride, fella. A lot longer than a few days, I'll tell you that. Another growling sigh. Where is she? The stable hand pointed, and Miguel entered the stable where his horse was lying down, so seemingly helpless and tired. Esther, hey there. You're all right. Esther huffed, which sounded like a scoff. Gonna have to leave you here, okay? 
Me and the Palomino are going to get that box open right after I know I'm not being hunted anymore. A few gentle strokes on her neck. Hey, said a voice from another stall. Miguel looked up. You Miguel? It was a blonde man. Not good, Miguel thought, as he said. No, Samuel. The man squinted. Not so sure I believe you. Miguel was pretending to fuss with his belt and gear, focusing on the white-handled gun and the right holster. That there Palomino in the other stall belonged to a friend of mine. Just found out yesterday he's dead. Used to carry around a white-handled gun. Miguel snapped open a pouch on the belt for no reason. The young man rolled his head around, waiting for Miguel to respond. Not ringing any bells? I'll give you a hint. It's the same gun you got under your arm. Don't know anything about that. Got this gear from a guy yesterday night. Lost it in a bet at the tavern. You know, the man clicked his tongue and walked up to Miguel now. I don't care about the piece or the nag. I'm looking for something else that maybe you did or didn't win in a bet. Box. About yay big. Black and gold. Has something important in it. Miguel said nothing. The fellow you won this stuff from. He mentioned a box. No. I'll cut to the chase, Miguel. I don't believe you. Because to a T, you match the description my boss gave me. My partners want you dead. I could care less if you're dead or alive. All I want from you is a box. And my guess is you stashed it somewhere, and it'd make my job a whole lot easier if you tell me where it is. I tell you, and then you kill me. That how it works? The man scoffed through his lips. Nah, I don't trust you that much. You'd tag me to it first, and then I'd let you go. Makes things a little less complicated. I'm a simple guy. Miguel set his jaw, unsure as to how to proceed. Why would you let me live? I show respect as much as I can. For as much as I kill, it's strange to say, but I don't like doing it. Any chance I can avoid it, I take it. Deal? What's in the box? Only the boss knows that. First I get all the cash you have on you. No can do, partner. Why'd you ask for something like that? If you'd agreed, I would know you'd kill me later and take your money back. Since you disagreed, it tells me you might mean what you're saying. About not killing me. We got a deal or are we gonna yammer till your horse is ready to walk? Deal. Promise me you'll leave me alone. All I care about is the box, partner. Miguel led the way out of the stable and they walked down the main street, dust kicking up, sun beating down on the wooden facades of the building. The man sucked his teeth before saying, Say, how much you want for that white-handled gun? Miguel looked down and then up at the man. You don't want this gun. Belonged to a friend of mine. He's dead now, and if you don't mind, I'd like to buy. No. Miguel said, unsure as to why he was so attached, and started muttering what was on his mind, rationalizing. Got a curse on it. You don't want this piece. Curse? Don't got no curse on it. What you talking about? Miguel stayed quiet. That seemed to do the trick. The man also stayed quiet the entire walk to the bank. They walked in, and a man was speaking to the teller that Miguel had thrown the box to. The man had a large nose, and his dark young eyes sized at Miguel, as the teller also glared at Miguel and whispered a few words to the dark-eyed man. Miguel and his counterpart walked up just behind that particular teller and waited in line. The dark-eyed man turned around and faced Miguel with a sauntered look about him, like Miguel was a coyote trying to sell him a wristwatch. Causing a bit of a stir in the bank, were you? No, Miguel said. A man Danny says he did. What's that about? Throwing boxes at him? I can be persuasive. Aye, maybe you can. Back soon too, gents. Weren't you just here, mister? I don't know you. Can I talk to the teller now? I'm a sheriff. Danny says you were a bit of trouble. Just my luck, Miguel thought and considered the gun under his right hand. I'm just here to get what I left and pay what I owe. You bringing trouble to this town, mister? Trouble's on its way. The quicker I get this box, the less likely the trouble will arrive in time to hurt anyone, Miguel said. Now hurry up. 
The sheriff stepped aside. Give me my box, Miguel said. The teller, a sour look on his face, reached under the counter and pulled the box out. Thought I told you to keep it in the safe, Miguel said. The teller's icy expression remained as he said, Can you catch? Yes, Miguel said. The teller tossed the box over the top of the wall, separating him from the civilians. Miguel caught it. The teller tossed the box over the wall that separated him from the civilians, and Miguel caught it. Say, what's in that box the trouble so desperate to find? Sheriff asked. The gang member said, Something valuable and small. Yeah, I figured that, the sheriff said. Please take it somewhere else. Miguel was still at the counter when he said, Give me my ten dollars back. Certainly not, the teller said. I held up my end of the bargain. Miguel realized that was the last of his on-hand cash, and said, I don't have any other money right now. You only watched it for no more than twenty minutes. The teller said, There must be some way for you to pay me for that time. Let's say five dollars? Miguel thought for a moment, and then he slowly, gently, took the white-handled gun out of its holster and laid it on the bank's counter. How about this instead? The teller's eyes were on the piece now. What am I going to do with that? I don't want that. Everyone could use a gun, Miguel said. I'm a pacifist, and I find this ridiculous. I'd rather keep the ten dollars. I'm looking for payment. Just my luck, Miguel thought. He grabbed the gun again and glared at the teller dead in the eyes as he held it in his hand. Pacifist, hmm? The sheriff had his hand on his own gun now. The teller let out a long exhale as the eyes bounced around the room, reading the taut expressions. I, uh, t t t uh, I tell you what. Oh, all you really owe me is an apology for your rude manner. I suppose it will suffice since I only look after your box for a few minutes anyway. The air in the room grew dense. The rest of the tellers and bystanders had quieted watching Miguel, white gun in his hand, and the sheriff, a gun now in his hand as well. Then in the quiet, Miguel heard that laughter again. <laughs> this time Miguel listened to the laughter and raised his gun at the sheriff, but the gang member shot Miguel first. A gut shot. Miguel fell to the ground, grunting quietly, and then wheezing panicked breaths. As best as he could, he said through the pain, Don't take that gun. It's got a curse on it. Nobody in the bank heard anything because their ears were ringing from the shot.